Every single one of them drowned and died. As Pharaoh was drowning, he started saying in the water, I believe that there is no God but Allah in whom the children of Israel believe. And I am also one of those who submit to Allah. But what did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reply? Now you believe, although you disobeyed earlier and were among the mischief makers, and it was written upon him that he will die a disbeliever, a kafir. The reign of Pharaoh was over. There were about 700,000 of them standing with Musa salam, on the east side of the Red Sea. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, O children of Israel, as you saw now, we saved you from Pharaoh and from the torture. And now we are making an appointment with you. Allah said to Musa salam, take the children of Israel to Mount Tur. Over there, there's going to be a covenant between them and Allah. Allah was going to give Musa alayhi salam the Torah. On their way, Musa alayhi salam did something strange. Out of his love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he decided to hurry, beat them to the Mount Tur. Allah spoke to Musa alayhi salam directly. But he shouldn't have done that really. Wasn't very wise. They've stuffed up over there. Something's happened. We have allowed a test, a sifting to happen with your people. The samurai guy, the guy from Samurai, he has misguided them. Allah was going to give Musa alayhi salam the Torah. So they headed off towards that place. As they were heading, they got hungry, they got tired. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent upon them something amazing. He started making the clouds rain upon them a special substance. This special substance in the Quran was called man. And they can make out of it several things. They can make dough. They can make something that looked like rice. They could make all sorts of things out of it. Several ingredients. And they could dry it and it lasted for a while. Also, Allah started sending upon them salwa. Salwa is a type of bird. In the Bible it says quail. Every day, twice a day, in the morning and the evening, as, as it's stated in the Quran, these birds would come to them very peacefully. They'd offer themselves, they'd pick them up, and they would eat them, subhanAllah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them luxury, food, looked after them in every way. Now with the children of Israel, they also had some of the jewelry from the people of Pharaoh as well. How did they have the jewelry? Israelite tradition, it says that they used to borrow it from their neighbors, and so they took it with them, they were wearing it, and it was heavy. So it was cursed material, but they had it on for a little while. On their way, brothers and sisters, as they were going to Jabal al tur they passed by a tribe. And they found that this tribe were worshipping different statues, idols. So the children of Israel said to Musa salam and Harun, O oh Musa, why don't you make for us idols? The same as they have idols that they worship. We hang our stuff on it, we worship it. After all this, they forgot because they're still used to shirk. And Musa salam, he got angry at them saying, you, look what you've just seen, look what Allah has given you, look what Allah has done, and you're already going to make partners with Allah. Repent to Allah. So then they repented. On their way, Musa salam did something strange. Out of his love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he decided to hurry, beat them to the Mount Tur. He left his brother Harun salam and said to him, Ya Harun, stay back with the people because they're a bit slow. You look after them and I entrust you with them. And follow me with them. I'm going to beat you to Mount Tur because I want to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and speak to him so that he can be pleased with me. When Musa salam reached Jabal al tur and the children of Israel stayed behind with Harun, Allah spoke to Musa salam directly. He said to him, what made you hurry up ya Musa and beat your people to me? Musa salam replied, 
my Lord, they are following me. Oh my Lord, I hurried up because I just wanted to please you. But you shouldn't have done that really. It wasn't very wise. They've stuffed up over there. Something's happened. We have allowed a test, a sifting to happen with your people. The samurai guy, the guy from Samurai, he has misguided them. Something terrible has happened behind you. Now Allah says in the Quran, we made an appointment with Moses to come to us to spend 30 nights with him. Allah was going to teach him the Torah for 30 nights. Musa salam realized he was fasting when he met Allah with fast in the day. He felt that his breath wasn't pleasant because of the fasting. So he started to eat leaves from trees to change the breath. Again, why? Because he's speaking to Allah, he wants his breath to smell nice. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to him, why did you break your fast? He said, my Lord, to please you. And Allah said to him, didn't you know that the breath of a fasting person is more beloved to me than the smell of, fra of the fragrance of musk? You have to stay another 10 days. He ended up staying for 40 nights. That extra 10 days made the children of Israel think that Moses had left them. They were, he ran away. So a group of them got together and they said, <laughs> he left us. He said to us, going to be back 30 days and he's not back anyway. But in the meantime, they had already been worshipping a statue. As Musa salam was in the tour, he knew something's wrong with his people and he had to stay an extra 10 days. The children of Israel didn't follow him. But he stayed with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala giving him the Torah. Allah was giving him the Torah written on planks of rock. And they were being carved into the rock. As this was happening, and Allah is speaking to Musa alayhi salam. Musa alayhi salam, he couldn't help himself. What did he say? He said, uh, he said, my Lord, allow me to look at you. I want to see you. Allah replied, you are not able to see me. But look at that mountain over there. If the mountain can stay where it is, you will be able to see me. But then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, when his Lord showed himself to the mountain, he made the whole mountain crumble into pieces, little tiny pieces, the entire mountain. And Musa, as a result of seeing this, he went unconscious. When Musa salam, woke up, he said, Oh my Lord, you are perfect. You are far away from imperfection. I have returned to you. Please forgive me for asking you that question. I am the first to believe in you, my Lord. Allah says the 40 days have finished. Musa salam, returns to his people. What did he see? He came and he saw them worshipping a golden calf. So Musa alayhi salam, what does he do? He runs to his brother Harun. Because remember when Musa alayhi salam hurried up to meet Allah, he told his brother Harun to look after his people after him and not to let them go astray. So he runs to his brother because he's, got a, he's blaming him now for what they have done. And something interesting Allah says. He says that Musa alayhi salam dropped the scriptures that were on the rocks, he dropped them to the ground. These are words of Allah, he dropped them to the ground. He was angry at his brother first. So he grabs him by his beard and grabs him by his forelock and he starts to shake him and saying to him, Ya Harun, why did you do that? Why didn't you come to me and tell me that my people have worshipped the cow? And then Harun alayhi salam replied by saying, Oh my mother's son, calm down. Don't grab my beard. And don't grab my head. And then Musa Islam let him go. And then Harun said, I feared that if I went to you to tell you what had happened, only some of them were going to follow me and some of them were going to stay behind. And you were going to say to me, why did you come and divide the children of Israel and not wait until I return? That's what you would have said, O oh Musa. So Musa Islam calmed down. And he asked him what happened. And Harun Islam said, I told them and I informed them, and I warned them. And then he says, وَكَادُوا أَنْ يَقْتُلُونَنِي I had no power. Musa alayhi salam was seen as the chief. He was strong. They feared him. Whereas Harun, they took advantage of him because of his leniency. 
So Musa alayhi salam comes up to the people and he says to them, Did I stay too long? 40 days, it couldn't last and straight away. You're worshipping a cow. Didn't Allah promise you a beautiful promise? What was the promise? That He was going to make you victorious and leaders. You want the anger of Allah? You want to call upon it? And so you betray my promise? And their only reply was, Oh Musa, no, 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 no. We didn't mean not to fulfill the promise. We were following you. We were coming to the mountain. We were going to follow you as we said. But you see, the jewelry that we borrowed from, you know, the, the Egyptians, we used to have neighbors and they gave us some jewelry as gifts and we still got them. And they were too heavy, you know, a lot of jewelry on our backs and we thought we've got to get rid of it. And since he told us it's not good wealth, we got it and we buried it. Just so that we, you know, we got too heavy, we got too tired. That's why we took long to get to you. And then they said, and anyway, it was a Samiri who made the car, not us. And then he tricked us. So Musa a.s. turns his attention to that man, a Samiri. A Samiri means he comes from a place called Samurai. He's from the lineage of one of the children of Yaqub a.s. down the line. And he used to have a job with the Pharaoh in, in Egypt. He, he was quite technologically advanced. He was quite smart. He used to invent things. He was like an engineer. But that knowledge got to his head and he started to think that he is better than the people, he's more intelligent than the people. So Musa Salam says to him, what's your story? Why have you made this tragedy? And the Samiri answers Musa Salam with arrogance as if he's too smart for him. After I made the cow, I was able to make the cow have a sound. Maybe he made him hollow in such a way that wind will pass through his uh, metal body and produce a sound. Now you're talking to primitive people, children of Israel who don't know anything about this and they thought, wow, it must be a God, look, the cow is talking. He goes, look, I can, can see with my knowledge things which they can never see. I don't really need your guidance as much as they do because I'm already ahead. So I can get my own knowledge and figure out my own stuff. I can give fatwas by myself and I've got enough knowledge. That's what he's saying. So instead, Musa Hassan uses a different reply. He says, hmm, is that so? Okay then, Samiri, we're going to let you go. So long as you live in this life, you can say whatever you want. So what does he do? In front of everybody, he says, oh yeah, Samiri, and see this Lord of yours, this God that you created? Watch what I'm going to do with it. He grabs it, rips it apart, melts it, burns it, and throws it in the Nile. He said, if this was a God, can I do that to him? As Samiri goes on his way, he starts getting lost, no one wants to listen to him anymore. So what happened next? Musa salam, then goes to the Al-Wah, to the commandments of the Torah. He lifts them and now they're ready to accept what's in the Torah. They came back to their senses, right? After that big lesson. You would think they did, but instead they said, we will not accept them until we see what's written in them first. If we like it, we'll follow. If we don't like it, we're going to have to talk a little. So then Allah lifted a mountain over their heads and then they got scared. And Musa a.s. screamed, take what's in the Torah with strength and might and sincerity and honesty. Don't fiddle around with it. And that's when they accepted. Now, there were 70 among their leaders whom some people came up to them and started doubting whether Musa a.s. was actually speaking to Allah or not. So a group of them come along and they said to their leaders, can you guys go with Musa and go and see? What if he's not telling us the truth? That was in secret. So the 70 went to Musa and they said, yeah Musa, our people want to make sure we'll come with you just so that we can observe ourselves and be witness and make the message even stronger. Musa a.s. had to be patient with them. Now these 70 were the most righteous and pious of them all. They were the best of the best who went with Musa a.s. So they went with him and Musa a.s. would not let them enter the holy valley. He told them, you wait outside. And all they heard was they heard conversation, voices which they cannot explain. After they heard it, Musa a.s. comes out and they said, we're not going to go back with you just like that. All we did was heard speech. How do we know that Allah was talking to you? 
we will not return until we see Allah with our naked eye. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He bestowed His anger upon them after all this time. Where is there any man? And He sent Jibreel alayhi salam down, He screamed and they all died. Musa alayhi salam sat there and it's in the Quran. Yeah. He made dua and cried to Allah. He says, Oh Allah, if you want, you can destroy us all. If you want, you can keep us all. But oh Allah, I am their messenger and you sent me. And I, I hope that I haven't failed. And if you're not angry with me, please, I don't care. It's okay. But for me to return back with them alive is better for my message and for your message. Oh Allah, for your worship. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then raised them up again after you died. And that's when they said, Astaghfirullah, we believe in Allah. And they repented. They returned. And subhanAllah, many of them believed in them and many of them were still weak in Iman. Children of Israel, very, very hard people, very. Allah promised that the children of Israel are going to enter the Holy Land of Al-Aqsa. It has been written for you to be the authority over it. It was given to the children of Israel at a time when two prophets whom we believe in are leading them. Allah says to them now that Musa and Harun said to them, when they got close to it, they didn't enter it yet, Musa and Harun stood up and said, O oh my people, enter the land that has been written for you. Don't go back on your, on your word, don't, just enter. And then if you don't enter it, then you will be losers. You know what they said to him? They said, O oh Musa, O oh Musa, there's giant people in there, they're too tough for us. We will not enter it until these giant people get out of it. Once they get out, then we will enter it. Two big problems here. Number one, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not tell them to fight. He only said, enter. If you enter, it's yours. But it's as if they didn't hear it. Second problem, they want to get the people out. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't want to get the people out. He said, enter it. The people will stay. They're citizens. What have they done? Nothing. But I'm going to give you authority in the land. You're going to work in there. You're going to be respected. You're going to rise. You're going to have positions. People will respect you. I'm going to give you a good life. A respectful life different to what you had. You were peasants. No. They've got to get out. Two men who feared Allah and Allah had blessed them. Who were they? Musa and Harun. They were the only two men. No one else in the children of Israel stood up. Only Harun and Musa stood up and they said to them, Listen, just enter the door. Step in, one step. And it's yours. What did they reply? Qalu, ya Musa, ya Musa, ya Musa. Oh no, we will never ever enter it. As we told you, so long as they're in there, we ain't going in, mate. And then they said something so disrespectful and hurtful. You and your Lord go, fight together. We're going to stay right here sitting. Once you and your Lord beat them, you get them out, we're going. So then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that Harun and Musa gave up and they said, Oh my Lord, I cannot control and possess except myself and my brother. Separate us. We are not, we are not equal to them. We don't want what they want, oh my Lord. Forgive us. So then Allah said, Okay, very well. Then now the Aqsa is forbidden upon them. For 40 years, they will be lost in the land. They're not going to know how to get out. Don't feel sorry for the people who are corrupt. 40 years means that the whole generation, that 700,000, is going to be gone. And they're going to give birth to new children. And Allah is telling him, in other words, this generation, forget it. But the next generation is going to be better. So what happened to them? They went out, khalas, and they kept moving around. They did not know how to get out of it. And they were stuck there. So then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to them, Don't worry. You're going to stay in here 40 years. I'll keep sending down the man, that substance from the sky. You can make your bread and your, uh, and your, your, your oats and everything with it. I'll keep sending you birds of different types. You can eat its meat. And then he said, Oh Musa, go to the edge of the mountain. They went to the Thur. And there was a massive rock. And Allah said to Musa, hit it with your staff, with your stick. Twelve fountains came out of that rock. Why twelve? Because there were twelve different tribes. And that's how Allah looked after them. But then, 
They got tired and sick of the stuff God was sending down on them and the birds and the water. They said, Ya Musa, ask your Lord to give us something else. You know, we got tired of all this stuff that he's sending. It's beautiful stuff. What do you want? Because we want to plant onions and garlic. We want to graze land. We want to plow. We want to dig. We want to farm. And we want uh, you know, things like onions and garlic. Musa Isaiah said to them, what's wrong with you people? You want to exchange that which is good that Allah has given you to that which is worse? SubhanAllah. And whenever they ask for things, they always ask to make life harder on them. Now they've got to plow. They've got to hurt their backs. Their lifespan is going to be shorter. They're not going to live longer. Because they're tired and they're wearing out their bodies. My brothers and sisters in Islam, what happened? Now there are two main stories. One of them is about a man who was murdered among them. And they wanted to find the killer. And another story is Musa alayhi salam meeting a pious, knowledgeable man who had more knowledge than Musa alayhi salam. He was a prophet. 